straining to the mind Wanting a place to hide This weary soul This bag of bones I try with all my mind But I just can't win the fight I'm slowly drifting A vagabond Just when I ran out of road, I met a man I didn't know, and he told me that I was not alone. Come on, you see. He picked me up, he turned me around, he placed my feet on solid ground. I found the master, I found the savior, because he healed my heart, he changed.
faced with this battle against this army and our Moses goes to this mountain and lifts his hands towards God and scripture says that whenever Moses had his hands lifted towards God they found favour in the battle but as soon as he began to grow weary the tide of the battle would shift against them and um, long story short God was victorious Moses had his hands towards him his posture towards him but I think this reminds us that no matter what's in front, no matter what's behind, our victory comes from God, amen. He's the one who fights our battles for us, amen. So you don't need to be anxious for anything. You don't need to have fear for anything because our God fights for us. Jehovah Nisi fights our battles for us, amen. So I wonder if we can just take this moment right now, as Moses did, align our heart towards Him. 
align our posture towards Him, the one who fights on our behalf. Amen. Can you do that with me this morning? Over every air 
And I speak Jesus. I speak Jesus. When I'm lost, when I'm hurting, I speak Jesus in the valley. Strange, please. 
the things of earth. And the things will grow strangely in the light of His glory and grace. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Because you are worthy. We look to you this morning. We look to you this morning. I, I just feel in this place, it's a, this morning, it's a moment just to turn to him. And the psalmist captures it. I look to the hills, where does my hope, uh, help come from? It comes from the Lord. We just sung, turn our eyes towards Jesus. Simple words, powerful words. If we actually do it. You may have walked into this place and something's sitting heavy on your shoulders, whether it's a bad doctor's report or it's finances or whatever it may be for you right now. Turn to Jesus. Turn to Jesus. Because when we look at the problem, they start to get bigger and bigger. When we look towards Jesus, the things of earth grow strangely dim. Those things get smaller and smaller. Amen. So we're going to pray in just a moment. And before we do, we, we found out this week that uh, one of our missionaries who've been serving the, the Lord for many years um, and uh, we've supported for many years, Ross Winchester. We've, we found out this week that he's been diagnosed with cancer, so we're going to lift him up in prayer. Uh, and I know many of you do hold them in your prayer, uh, but we're going to pray, amen, for healing. Uh, he does incredible work, and, and we want to continue to support him. Uh, but maybe you're in this place, maybe you're joining us online and you have something that you need prayer for. Why don't you raise your hands right now? We're going to believe as family. We're going to pray. We're going to stand with you in prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you that we can turn to you. We thank you that we can turn to you. What a privilege, what a blessing it is that we can turn to you. And Father, I pray that those of us with our hands raised this morning, move their hearts towards you. Lord, I thank you that you can look after the practical, Father, and we release miracles right now in healing, in provision, in restoration. We believe for these things. But Lord, move their hearts and their, their, their eyes towards you this morning. Let, let them know your peace first and foremost. That surpasses all understanding. And Lord, I thank you that you are making a way where there seemingly isn't one. Father, we lift Ross up right now and his family. Lord, we declare healing in his body. Father, we hear what the doctors are saying, but we thank you that you are the great physician. So right now we pray for healing. Healing right now. And in this room, let healing be released, Father. We thank you that you are still working today. You are still working today. Lord, let there just be an infilling of peace as we turn to you this morning. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. Amen. 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 Come on, let's lift up some praise this morning. So good. We serve a good God. Amen. Amen. Well, it's so good to see you in the house this morning. And what a day to be in church worshiping with family. Why don't you say hi to someone next to you as you take your seats. How good. Awesome. 
Well, if you're joining us online, we just want to say thank you for joining us as well. And we know that even though you're not in this room, we are standing together in faith. We pray that you will be blessed this morning. Uh, and if you are in the room, maybe for the first time, maybe the first time in a long time, we just want to say welcome. Uh, if we haven't met before, my name's Nathan. I'm one of the pastors here at Faith. Uh, and look, it would be great to meet with you, maybe answer questions you have, or maybe just to say hi. I, I'd encourage you, you would have walked past the Next Steps counters in the foyer uh, after the service. Come and say hi to the team. We would love to meet you uh, and, uh, and have a chat, let you know about what's going on in the life of the church. Um, and that would be fantastic. But there is a few things going on. Uh, at church at the moment. Firstly, this Tuesday night at 7 p.m. is our church-wide team night. So maybe you serve in any area or you're, or you're a leader, connect group leader. We have a team night this Tuesday night right here, 7 p.m. Uh, and I'd encourage you to come along. It's our first one for the year. Pastor Matt's going to be sharing uh, about the year, but really just imparting into uh, us as a team. So I encourage you, if you serve in any area, come along 7 p.m. this Tuesday night. Uh, fantastic. Well, we're going to come around our time of giving, uh, the, all the ways you can give up on the screen. But, but firstly, a welcome back to Pastor Leighton and Ailey and the family. Uh, they've just come back from a well-deserved and thoroughly enjoyed by the sounds of it break. So make sure you give him a hug. Uh, he loves that. Uh, straight after the service, say hi. Uh, it's good to have him back. Uh, but giving. Look, I just, want to, I just want to encourage, celebrate with you really that we get to have, we have the privilege to, to sow into good soil. And it is a privilege. And what we're seeing around our community, but also the globe is just, it's incredible to be a part of. And it happens through uh, your giving uh, week in, week out. And look, when it comes to giving, it's a statement that God is over all things, even our resources. It's, uh, and there are blessing that flows from that. Uh, uh, but overall, it's just awesome to celebrate that we're seeing the tangible fruit of what God's doing in and around our community in the world. Uh, and uh, next week is Vision Sunday. And uh, as a church, we're celebrating 70 years this year. And so talk about good soil. Uh, the numbers of people who have come through this house, who have been released from this house to see uh, his ministry outworked all over the place is just incredible. So uh, I'd encourage you to come along. And it's not just going to be come along and listen to what's happening, but it's where you can be a part of it. Uh, and after the service, the 1030 service, we're doing food together with family. And uh, can I just say, and I want to make sure I get this right, because this isn't, this isn't just any food. We have brisket. Uh, we have mac and cheese and coleslaw. Uh, yeah, I know. Uh, Pastor Alex, I'm sure you have at least a little bit to do with that. And if he does, which he does, uh, you definitely want to be here to celebrate with family as we eat uh, and celebrate together the 70 years. Uh, but also hear from Pastor Matt the vision for this year and some exciting things that are coming up for our church. So I'd encourage you to come along. Uh, but before we give, can I just say again, it's good soil. It's good soil. It's so good to celebrate what God is doing. Well, why don't you take your giving in your hands and let's pray. Father, I thank you that we have the opportunity to sow into your kingdom. Lord, I thank you that it is a privilege and we get to be a part of what you're doing. This isn't just something that we watch done in, a, in the distance, but we are a part of it. So Father, this morning, bless every giver uh, in this place, Father. And I just pray that it would go forth and achieve all you've called it to achieve in Jesus' mighty name. And someone said, amen, amen. You can pass the buckets from the ends of the row in. That'd be fantastic. Tonight, Revival Night. We have Pastor Sam Hines preaching the Word, and so you are not going to want to miss it. He was giving me a little bit of a snippet in the foyer early, and uh, let me tell you, he's, he's, got to, he's got to preach tonight. So I want you to come out and be blessed by that. It's going to be great. Um, 5.30 tonight. Thank you, host team. Fantastic. Well, like I said, we're a church that not only has impact here locally, but also globally. We support uh, many, many missionaries and, and projects around the globe. And this morning, it is our great privilege uh, to have uh, Chad and Cory Irons here in the building. And they're doing incredible work over in Cambodia. So why don't you welcome Chad as he comes and give us a little bit of an update. 
Hi, church, and thank you for this opportunity to share a bit about what's happening in Cambodia. Corey and I have just finished off our first 12 months of living in Phnom Penh, Cambodia, and we're back just for a month, and then we, we head back. Uh, but before that, I had 13 years working with ACCI Missions and Relief here in Melbourne under Pastor Allen, and it was a, just a great time. And what I loved about ACCI was the opportunity to serve alongside people who were out there on the field, uh, preaching the gospel with words and actions, in redemptive actions, and coming alongside national partners and supporting them that way. And so what our heart has been is for our time in Cambodia, that we would come alongside existing organizations and champion national leaders and those their organizations. One of the most sustainable things we can do is so into who's going to be there long term, national leaders, national organizations, build their capacity so that they're just more capable to continue to exist when we're not there. And we see our role to come in and just fill gaps. Uh, everyone's got gaps. We've got gaps. Our churches have gaps. And so we've gone there to, to help fill gaps. Cambodia is a nation with only 2% Christian, 95% Buddhist. So there's a need for, for more workers for the harvest. And one of the, one of the partners we're alongside is our local church. It's all in uh, the Khmer language. They preach in Khmer. So some services, we understand maybe 20% of what's going on, other times about 5%. Uh, so it's very humbling to be returned back to the language skills of a toddler, uh, but we've enjoyed being able to work alongside them and their team. Many of their, their leaders speak uh, very good English, so we, we're sowing into their management, we're sowing into their, their direction. So one of the exciting things is that they've all got vision and direction and plans for the future. We're just coming alongside them and their plans. Uh, one example is uh, that the last year they needed a new kids and youth building because the, the kids and, and the youth had grown. They needed their own facilities. And so they, they made these plans for a building and they said, okay, who overseas can pay for this? And I said, oh, hang on, let's just take a step back. How much can we find here in Cambodia? And they managed to find 50% of the funds in country, which, you know, makes it a lot easier to raise the other 50%. <laughs> it, it's just amazing. People don't have as many deficits as they think they have. <laughs> and when we come alongside, we can help people understand that, actually, you've got a lot of the strengths. You've got a lot of the tools already in the house. If we can find those, it's a lot less gaps that we've got to fill in. One of the other exciting things that, that happened is we've just got a, a great church family who give and serve, love one another. And we had one of our church members who had a book written about his, his life story, the ups, the downs. <laughs> it was a bit of a testimony. And so we hosted a book launch in our church. For, for him, he invited a number of his, uh, his Buddhist friends, business leaders, those sorts of people. And we, we just hosted them and loved on them. We, we had food. Uh, the, the church came together and they served them. And there was this one bi Buddhist business lady who's just, she's going around and she's asking, who's paying for all these people to be here? Who paid for this food? Who's, who's funding this? Why are they doing it? What's their motives? And but we're just saying, no, these are vol everyone's volunteering. Um, we, we came together and we, the church is paying for the food. And she just couldn't get her head around it. And the next day she called two of our leaders and she asked them for an appointment. And she asked them all the same questions. Why are these people serving? Who's paying for them? And they just explained, no, this is what we do as, as Christians. We love one another. We care. We serve. We look after one another. And she just said, look, I give a lot of money to Buddhist temples. I'm thinking now that I might also give to churches. <laughs> Who knows whether she'll give. What I do know is that this lady was impacted by Jesus that she saw lived out in the life of her followers. And that's what we want to do. Uh, and our heart is to see more churches planted in Cambodia. There's a couple who have moved to Siem Reap, which is about six hours drive away. And they're in the process of planting a church there. And they want to do the same. Something that reaches into their community, that exposes Jesus to a group of people who haven't had the opportunity to hear the gospel message yet. One of the other partners we work with is an organization called Children in Families. They uh, provide support for, to, to 
vulnerable children and their families to prevent family breakdown. About 50% of the cases they work with are children living with a disability. They service about 200 cases that are in, in any given month. And they're doing a great work, great faith-based organization, sharing the good news through their actions and loving others. And we've, once again, coming alongside them uh, in the board, supporting their management. So I just want to thank you, church, for get, coming alongside us and for coming alongside children and families. And uh, thank you for your support. Fantastic. Isn't that awesome? That is fabulous. My goodness. Let me tell you, not only do they do a great work uh, over in Cambodia, but they do it on our behalf. You know, many of you are never, ever going to, some of you don't even know where Cambodia is. Some of you are like, oh, yeah, it's somewhere in Europe, right? Okay, so, so some of you don't even know where it is. And yet, we are able to support people who are making a difference in that space. And when Chad and Corey are over there, they're actually filling gaps that you and I can't fill. Hey, look, if you can fill one of the gaps, then please feel free to talk to them afterwards. They will be more than happy to talk to you about the ability to go over there for a short period, a long period, anything, or helping even from here. But for many of us, we don't have the capacity to do that. We're never going to do that. But as a church, together, we can, we can make a difference in Cambodia through Chad and Corrie. And so we want to say thank you to Chad and Corrie for being our hands and feet into that space. It's not just a sacrifice that they make, although obviously they do, but it's a sacrifice their family makes as well. Their family's still here in Australia, their kids here in Australia, and so they don't get to see them as often as, uh, uh, as, you know, as they would like as parents. Um, but, uh, but the whole family contributes and makes a sacrifice in order to see that work done. And so we are grateful to them for definitely all the work that they do over in that space on our behalf as well. That's fabulous. Hey, one other thing, just to let you know before I get into it, uh, the team night this Tuesday. So some of you would have received an email of that. Uh, if you are a leader or, or you serve in the life of church in any way, uh, the email said it was 7.30 and you may have heard it was 7. It is 7.30. The email is correct. So uh, it's 7.30. So please, please, uh, just so you're aware. I mean, look, get there at 7. That's fine. You know, get there a bit early. That's awesome. Can they hang out with people beforehand. But just so you're aware, it is at 7.30 on Tuesday night. Fabulous. Are you feeling well? So good to be in church today. Uh, this is probably one of my favorite days. I have a lot of favorite days, but this has got to be one of my favorites. Uh, it's Connect Stronger Sunday. And it's one of my favorite days because this is the day that Jesus literally died that we might be able to have it. Yeah, never looked at it that way before, did you? This is the day that we look at the thing that is probably closest to God's heart. The day that Jesus died and rose again in order for us to be able to do, and that is to be family. The Bible tells us that, that Father, Son, and Holy Spirit were in perfect unity and communion. They did not need you and I. And yet, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit said, hey, you know what? We want a bigger family. And we're going to create man. We were created to be family of God. We were created to be in family. This is the day that we focus in a little bit on that. And so for me, this is an exciting day. When Pastor Matt and Frank have said, hey, we'd like you to preach on Connect Stronger Sunday. It's like, yes, that is a great day. Let me add it. And so this morning, what I want to do is I want us to look at a very well-known passage. Many of us would be familiar with this passage, um, but... We're going to look at just one particular aspect of this passage. If you have your Bible, you might want to turn to Matthew chapter 5. We're going to see what Jesus says about this whole connecting thing. Spoiler alert, he's for it. Just in case you didn't know. Matthew chapter 5, we're going to read from verse 13. And uh, I'm reading from the Message Bible. So you may have a different version, that's fine, read along. But I just like the way the message kind of brings... Uh, brings it out. Jesus is speaking and he says this, let me tell you why you're here. You're here to be salt seasoning that brings out the God flavors of this earth. Is that cool? That's a great way to say you are the salt of the earth. If you lose your saltiness, how will people taste godliness? You've lost your usefulness. You'll end up in the garbage. Here's another way to put it. You're here to be light 
bringing out the God colours in the world. Come on, you are the light of the world, Jesus is saying. God is not a secret to be kept. We're going public with this. As public as a city on a hill. Everyone say city on a hill. If I make you light bearers, you don't think I'm going to hide you under a bucket, do you? I'm putting you on a light stand. Now that I've put you there on a hilltop, on a light stand, shine, keep open house. I love this. Be generous with your lives. By opening up to others, you'll prompt people to open up with God, this generous Father in heaven. Isn't that phenomenal? I love that. The NIV puts it like this. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. That's probably the way many of us are familiar with it. But I just love that keep open house, be generous. By opening up to others, you prompt people to open up with God, a generous Father in heaven. In this passage, we see Jesus compares us to three things. He says, you are salt. Everybody say salt. You are light and you are a city on a hill. Three things that Jesus compares us to. Now today, I do not have time to delve into the comparisons of our lives to salt and light. Each one of those is a separate message all by itself. I just don't have time. What I want to do is look specifically at the third descriptor that Jesus used. And I want to look at this because I think it actually teaches us what God's expectation is of us in regard to this whole living in community kind of thing. Not only did Jesus say you are salt, not only did he say that you are light, but Jesus said we are a city on a hill. Let me tell you why I love this one particularly. See, the others addressed who we are as individuals. You are salt, you are light. But this one is just a little bit different. This one is a calling to the corporate. You are a city on a hill. This is not just to you and to me. This is to us. This, is, this speaks about the way we engage each other, the way we relate, the way we connect. A city on a hill represents a number of different things. Jesus here is referring to how we, the church, relate to our world as a collective, not just as individuals in our sphere of influence. When he talks about being a city on a hill, he's telling us that there are specific attributes the church should display. What are those attributes? I'm so glad you asked that question. I can see it written all over your face. The first of those attributes, and there are many, we're only going to hit three of them. The first of those attributes is that a city is a collective. One person does not a city make. No man is an island. A city is a group of people that makes it, by definition, a place of connection. It makes it, by definition, a place of community. When Jesus said, you are a city on a hill, he speaks to us of how we are to relate to each other the kind of community that God calls us to be in, but the kind of community God calls us to be. Who we are to be as community. A city is a group of diverse people coming to live together in community and to look out for each other. A city is a place that those inside it benefit from each other's presence. You are better because of the person sitting in front of you. You are more complete. You are more whole. You are more well-rounded. I know some of us are more well-rounded than others. <laughs> because of the person sitting next to you. You know, it's interesting. It's, it's not so much like this these days. Like we see things a little bit differently today because we live in a different context. And if you really want to understand what it is that Jesus is saying, you've got to understand where he's coming from. You've got to understand what it is that he sees when he says this. You've got to understand how it is that he thinks when he says this. Because in biblical times, cities weren't like, you know, Melbourne and Sydney and, yeah, well, not Adelaide. But, yeah, probably a little bit more like Adelaide, weren't they? 
I come from Adelaide. If there's any other Adelaideans here, I feel so sorry. It's okay. <laughs> cities were a little bit different back then because cities didn't just kind of pop up out of nowhere. They evolved. They used to be like a group of villages or a group of tribes that would come together. And as these villages, as these tribes began to come together, they would actually start, you know what, we need, we, there's strength in numbers. We need to, we need to be united together. We need, to, we need to look out for one another. We need to protect each other. They would build walls to keep out invaders. And, and as a defense system, they would, they would build walls, walls to protect them from the hostile elements. And the idea was that there would be this strength that comes from this city of people joining together. Back then, they were so much more community-minded. It was about the corporate, the collective, the community. Today, in our Western society, everything's about the individual. But that's not where, that's not where Jesus was coming from. That's not the context that he was, he was saying this in. He thought differently to the way that we think. He saw that a city was something where strength comes from a group of people that come together and choose to look out for each other. That's what a city was for. When Jesus calls us a city on a hill, it's because God intended that we would never live isolated from other people of faith. That is not God's plan, that we would be isolated, but rather that we would engage strongly with one another, that we would live in a place of community, in a place of connection, in a place of together. You know, earlier this year, I, um, it was New Year's weekend. I can't remember what the, what the Sunday was, whether that was New Year's Day or that was whatever. But on the, uh, the day before, on the Saturday, uh, I caught a gastro bug. It was very, very exciting. I was supposed to preach on the New Year's service, and unfortunately, the only one I was preaching to was the toilet bowl. Like, it was just, it was not pretty. Although there was lots of colourful language. Waka, waka, waka. So... So Pastor Matt had to preach uh, in my place and I was grateful that he did that and I was not in a good way. I was very under the weather. And so that particular Sunday morning, I'm sitting on my lounge uh, and I'm just watching the service. And let me tell you, I was very grateful to be able to watch the service because there's no way I was going to be able to be here. And so bucket in hand, I'm sitting there watching the service and I was very grateful for that. Uh, G'day if uh, you're in our online service today, so glad you could be with us. And it was fabulous because it gave me an opportunity to, to at least be a part of it. I, I, I got to worship, I got to hear the word, I got to, and it was a great word, and I got to be challenged, and I got to, and so I was very, very grateful for that. But I gotta say, as much as I was grateful for it, and as great as it was, it's not the same as being here. It just wasn't. And and I was I'm glad we've we've got it, and I'm glad I was able to actually be part of it, but it just wasn't quite the same as being here. Why? Because God's plan for us is community. It is hard to be a city on a hill from my lounge room. It's hard to be a collective from my lounge room. God's imperative is us connecting together and being part of each other's lives. God is very, very explicit about the need for that. It's when we come together in community, when we come together as church, we become that city on a hill. A city is a collective. The second thing Jesus was trying to tell us is that a city, a city on a hill speaks of a place of refuge. It's a place of refuge. City is a safe place. Again, I know we don't think of cities that way now, but it was always intended as a safe place. This is where Jesus was coming from when he was talking. Because as much as it was a place of connection, it was a place of community, it was also a refuge. As I said before, cities in biblical times, people would be coming together and they would have walls for protection, walls for defense. And so when somebody was wandering through the plains of Israel, as they went walking through the plains and they began to see in the distance, the city start to come up off of the horizon. Oh, wait a second, there's a city there. There would be this sense of relief. Because on the plains, as they're walking the roads, the dusty roads of Israel, they're at risk of bandits, they're at risk of murderers, they're at risk of thieves. And as they see that city in the distance, there's this, there's this sense of relief. Oh, refuge is near. Safety is not far. 
won't be long now and, and we'll be in a safe place. We'll be in a place of comfort. We'll be in a, in a place that's a refuge from danger. It's a, it's a refuge from hunger and thirst. There'll be, there'll be provision there. We'll be in a place that's a refuge from wild animals. It'll be a refuge from the weariness, the tiredness, and the difficulty of the heat of the journey. It'll be a refuge from the weariness I'm feeling right now because it feels like it's been such a long, long journey. A city was a place that anyone could come into and receive this care, this place of safety. If the city on a hill is a community, the church in fact, then more than that, it's also a community that is a safe place for anybody to come into. It's a safe place for people to walk through these doors and come into. We are a community that God expects will look out for each other, care for each other. But even beyond that, not just each other, but those that are outside this community, that we will be looking out and caring for them. See, again, you have to know the context Jesus came from. Because we don't think this way, but Jesus did. Back in those days, what would happen is that people would end up uh, just kind of wandering into a city and they'd stand in the city square. And as they stood in the city square, they would wait for somebody to come up to them and say to them, hey, do you need a place to stay tonight? Do you need a place to stay? Actually, yes, I do. I'm just traveling through and I need a place to stay. Tonight. Come and stay at my place. Can you imagine that for a second? Just think. Some guy comes from Adelaide on his way to Sydney and he stops in Fed Square, you know, right next to that really big tree. And as he's standing there in Fed Square, you walk past. And as you walk in and you see him standing there in Fed Square, you said, hey, how you doing? Yeah, pretty good. Nice day, isn't it? Yeah. Summer in Melbourne. One day. That's awesome. You here for a while or, no, just passing through on my way to Sydney. Oh, very good. Do you need a place to stay? You got anywhere to stay tonight? Oh, well, actually I don't, no. Well, look, I've got a spare room, comfortable bed, nice warm shower. We'll throw a shrimp on the barbie, nice dinner. You can stay with us tonight before you're on your way. Ah, oh, that sounds nice. Come with me. Can you imagine that for a second? What are you, crazy? Could be any nut job there. See, where Jesus was coming from, that's what happened. That's just how it worked. In fact, God was quite explicit in his command to Israel to take care of the foreigner and the stranger. He was explicit in his command. It wasn't a suggestion. It was an instruction. Take care of the foreigner and the stranger. See, unlike today, where cities are threatening places, the city was an accepting place. The city was a place of refuge. God's expectation is that we not just look out for each other, but we would be looking out for every single person that walks through these doors. Every single person that comes into the city on a hill, that we would be looking out for them. People that we do not even know, that we would offer care, that this would be a refuge, a place of safety, a place of refuge that people can come in and feel safe. It's a place that, whether it's physically safe, emotionally safe, spiritually safe, a place they can come in and, and though they may be broken, it's okay, this is a place I can heal. Though they may be weary, it's okay, this is a place I can rest. Though they may feel like they're, they're separate, alone, isolated, it's okay, this is a place that I can connect, a place that I can be part of family, a place where my weariness can be restored. This is a safe place for me to come into. Hello, you're hearing me? That the city on a hill is a safe place. That's what God, that's what Jesus was talking about when he said, you are a city on a hill, a place to call home for everybody that walks through these doors as we care for and we build community with those people. It's God's call to us. It's what Jesus intended. The third thing Jesus was trying to tell us Yes, it's a place of connection and community. Absolutely, it's a place of refuge. But a city on a hill speaks of being an example. And Jesus was very, quite explicit about, you're an example. I'm going to let your light shine. I'm going to stick you on a, a city on a hill, uh, on a lampstand, not under a bucket. It was about being 
an example, an example of how things can be, how things should be, how community is supposed to look, an example of what it looks like for a diverse group of people to live together in unity, even though they may not look the same. They may not speak the same. They may not speak the same language. They may not think the same. They may not vote the same. They may have different philosophies. They may even have different beliefs. And yet, they come together and live in unity and in harmony. Look around. Look around. Take a moment. Look at the person in front of you, behind you, next to you. Have a quick look. Just quickly, just look. Look. Look how different they are to you. Yes, that's it. Just, it's like this. You ready? 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 Like this. And some of you are looking at me. Don't look at me. Look at the person next to you. Look at the people across from you. Look at them. They're so different to you. You are a living miracle. I'm telling you the fact in such a fractured society, in such a polarized society, a fragmented society, the fact that you can actually be in the same room and care for one another is a miracle. It is supernatural in nature. It is the church. It is the church. And the church was intended to be a city on a hill, an example to the world. And if the world ever needed an example, it is now in a time when it is so fractured and so separated and so isolated. The world needs an example of what it means to be different and yet still live in unity and live in harmony. Different backgrounds, ages, experience, yet we choose to connect. A group of people that would have a whole bunch of reasons not to connect. The church is intended to be God's example of a group of people that come together to care for one another and love each other by choice. And not by choice because we're good people and not by choice because we have a strength of will. I'm going to like that person even though I know they're a jerk. Not that kind of choice. We choose to do so because the love of God lives within our heart and we cannot help but love people as a result of it. That's why we choose. Because God placed His love in our heart. This kind of living becomes an example to the whole world, just like a city on a hill. Verse 16, let me read it again. In the same way, let your light shine before others. They may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Your choice to live in community, your choice to be a people that accepts others, your choice to love each other, your choice to be a place of refuge, it's these things that make us a city on a hill. Your choice to engage people as they walk through the doors. Your choice to push past your comfort zone and actually go up to someone and say, Hi, I've never met you before. What's your name? How long have you been coming to faith? Oh, 26 years. That's awesome. Wow. Isn't it funny? 26 years and I've never met you. Wow, big church, isn't it? It's okay. Don't be embarrassed. Most of us sit in the same place every week. And so you probably know the same five or six people around you. Go on, take a walk on the wild side. <laughs> this is what makes us a city on a hill. They make us an example to the whole world of what it means to be a son or daughter of God. This is what God calls us to. It's funny because in uh, John chapter 13, I love this passage. Jesus is speaking to his disciples, a group of people who, you know, like there's so many disciples in Israel, so many prophets, teachers, leaders. How will they know that we're yours? How will they know we're your disciples? You know, back then, the disciples of a particular teacher would actually copy the walk, as in the gate, the walk of the teacher. And so as people were walking, it'd be like, oh, yeah, he's, he's a disciple of Gamaliel. I can see that. Why? Well, because he walks like Gamaliel. They would intentionally copy the walk. And so they're saying, Jesus, what do, you, what do we do? do? Do we do the ministry of funny walks as well? You know, what do we, what do we do? How do they know that we, are, that we are your disciples? And Jesus said to them, they will know that you are my disciples by your fabulous buildings. Yeah, some of you are looking like I swore. Hey, 
That's because that's not what it says. I love our buildings, but that's not what it is that shows we are his disciple. By your superlative worship, wonderful worship. I'm appreciative of our worship. I get touched by God. I'm standing on the side of stage and I'm just feeling the presence of God. I'm crying as I feel God speak into my heart during worship. I'm grateful to a group of people that sow in week after week so we can experience the presence of God. But that's not how he's gonna know. It's not by our caring for the poor, and that's really important. It's not by our fabulous preaching, and I'm glad to be under great preaching where I actually hear the Word of God and grow and challenged and change. I'm grateful for all that. But let me tell you what Jesus said. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. That's it. If you love one another. And I'll tell you why that's so powerful, because we live in a world that doesn't. We live in a world that you should not love the person in front of you or behind you because they're different to you. And so how on earth could you love them? They're so different. No, 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 stick with your clan, stick with your tribe, stick with your party, stick with your whatever, but don't love people outside. That's the world we live in. But God says, no, 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 if you love one another, people are gonna look and say, wow, that's weird. But I kind of like it. How do I get into that? They'll see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. You want to be a good witness? Do all those other things. They're important. But love the people that God has placed in your life. That's how we do church right. That's the kind of church we want to be. We want to be that church, that city on a hill. We want to be that, that, that collective, that place of, of refuge, but we want to be that place That is an example to the world around us. That's why we have Connect Stronger Sunday, twice a year. Now we talk about connection a lot and we we speak about it heaps, but twice a year we just take a service to stop and focus specifically on what it means to connect stronger. We introduce our connect group leaders. Why? Because it's one of the opportunities that we have to connect with one another. It's an opportunity we wanted wanted to create so that you would be able to connect with people around you that you don't know, that you wouldn't normally hang out with, you wouldn't normally necessarily connect with. It's not because we're trying to fill your spare hours with stuff, you know, kill all, you know, because no one's busy, so let's make people busier. That's not it. But it's a priority because this is what God calls us to, to be that city on a hill, to be that connected, loving group of people that is church family. It's what we're called to. We are salt, we are light, but we are more than that. We are a city on a hill. The example of what it means to live in Christian community as the people of God. This morning, I wanna challenge you. 2024, make it a year where you're intentional about connection. Maybe make it a year where you're intentional, deliberate about getting into a connect group, getting into a group of people that that you can connect with, that you can get to know, not just hanging out with people that are your mates. I love my mates, it's it's great. But more than that, I've got 23 people coming over our place tomorrow for Super Bowl. 23 of my closest friends. It's not exactly true. Half of them, I don't even know who they are. (laughs) And if you're coming and I don't know who you are, we're gonna have a blast. We'll be friends by the end of it, guarantee it. I don't know who they are. They're invited by other people. And we, that's, that's intentional. If you know anyone who would want to come, invite them along. Just let me know. It's not just about connecting with the people that you know and that you connect well with. It's about connecting with people that you do not know and making them part of family. This morning, I'm going to ask our connect group leaders to stand wherever they are right now. If you're a connect group leader in this place, why don't you stand to your feet? That's it, stand up, stand up, stand up. Now we had a whole bunch of Connect Group leaders in the first service as well. I think I see up there as well. Oh, and over there. Oh, that's better. Now I can see. Look at that. Oh, look at that. Fantastic. That's very bright, Ruiny. First thing I looked over and bam, there it is, summer. I love it. Wear it for the one day you can. That's awesome. This is a group of people who are committed to giving you an opportunity to connect. 
They meet every week or every, every two weeks on a Tuesday or a Wednesday or a Friday or some other day of the week. And they do so because they want to give you an opportunity to get into a group of people that you can connect with and become part of family, become part of church family. It's a big church. Sometimes it's easy just to walk in and walk out. We don't want that. That's not what God called us to. He called us to connection. And so these people have committed to giving you that opportunity. And I want them to stay standing. I don't have time to get them all up and get them to speak. It's just not time for that this morning. So I've asked three people to come and to share a little bit about their group. Just for a minute each, just to share. But, but for you to know that as they're talking, look around, look at the people around that run a group and ask yourself, well, maybe, you know, which of those would I like to go and have a chat with and maybe see what their group is like? and see if that's the group for me to connect with. Now, every group is gonna meet every person's needs. It's probably a bit weird if I went to Grace and said, hey, can I come to your ladies' group? Right? <laughs> Look, I'm not beyond weird things, but that's probably a little bit weird for me. And so if you talk to one and it's not the group that, that connects with you, that's okay, find a different group, that's fine. Praveen, why don't you come and share? Give me a big hand. Hey church, good morning. My name is Praveen. I'm one of the connect leaders here at um, Dandong campus. Uh, I want to talk to you about a new group that we started last year. It's in Keysborough area. So if you live around Dandenong, Mulgrave, Noble Park, Keysborough, all surrounding areas, it's an adult group. Um, we've got, well, age is not a thing, right? Because I still feel 20, but we've got... <laughs> Well, people there from the age of 40 plus, um, professionals retired, we've got people in different walks of life doing life together. That group has blessed me a lot. It's only been around for two, two terms, but we share our testimonies, we pray with each other, we share our hearts out, and we stand with each other. So if you're not part of a connect group and you're looking to join one, Come check us out, you know, come, come give it a go. Shaman and Cheryl Esperut, who uh, were in the nine o'clock service, host it at their house. They've opened it up so that you can actually come and enjoy it. So um, if you want to know more about it, you want to talk about it, I will be out there in the foyer. So we'll Gavin and we can talk to you about it. Thank you. Very good. Hi, church. I'm Samuel and just started a Young Adults Connect group from 18... To about 22 with Beth Sutton over there. Give us a wave, Beth. Um, and so, yeah, it's in, it's in Berwick and it's going to be running fortnightly on a Tuesday. And so we know that that transition from high school to uni can be quite difficult and it can be some of those years of developing friendships and finding where you belong. And so we really felt called to start this connect group this year. So it's new. And so if you are 18 or 22, maybe a little bit older, Come see me. We'd love to get you connected as well. Thank you, church. Hi, church. My name is Jasmine. I run a connect group in Berwick for people aged 30 to roughly 40. Um, what I love about connect group is that regardless of where you're at in your faith, connect group is for everybody. I once invited someone to connect and they were like, oh, I've only been coming a few months. Will I be quizzed on the Bible? And I was like, absolutely not. <laughs> Um, because the thing is, whether or not you've been in church all your life or whether you just walked in last week, we're always learning more about God. And Connect Group's not a place where we come to flex how much we know about Scripture or how much we know about God. It's where we come to learn about God together. We're always learning about God. And that's what we do at Connect. We grow in our faith together. We encourage one another and, of course, eat good food. So if you have any questions about Connect, please don't be apprehensive. We'll be at the next steps counter after the service and we'd love to meet you. So we've asked all of our Connect Group leaders to make themselves available in the foyer, wandering around here. Look out for them. Go and have a chat to one of them. Or maybe go online and online, because obviously it's not all of our Connect Groups. There were some in the first service. Some people aren't here today. Uh, some will be tonight at the night service. Um, but you can go online and on our website, it has a listing of all of the Connect Groups, where they meet, when they meet, what it is that the, the demographic of the group is basically made up of. So there's Heaps of opportunity there to find a group that you can fit into and connect with people. Does that make sense? Could we give these guys a hand as they grab their seats? Yeah. 
Let me tell you, church, Connect Group changed my life. Back then we called it Home Fellowship Group and since then it's had a million different names. But whatever it is, this small group of people coming together and looking out for each other and building community, it's where, it's where I was baptised in the Holy Spirit for the first time. Well, baptised in the Holy Spirit. It was where uh, I, I actually felt like I received a call of God on my life, was, was in Connect Group. It was where I built friendships, where I built connections, where I grew, it's where my character changed. It's where, like, Connect Group just made such a difference to my life, which is why I love Connect Stronger Sunday, which is why when Pastor Matt and Frank said, hey, could you preach that day? It's like, yes, yes, I can. That's right. Because <laughs> it changed my life, literally. And I, just, I have no doubt and feel very confident in saying that there's no way I would be standing before you today if it was not for a Connect Group. And not for my connect group leaders. My very first connect group is Roland and Helen Lang back in Adelaide. Changed my life. And it can change yours. It can do, can make a difference in your life because that's God's plan is connection and community would do that in our lives. Amen? Why don't we bow our heads? We're gonna close in a second. Just before we do close, and while we have our head bowed, I just wanna take a moment because we've been talking about this connection and this, this, the church being a safe place. And I just feel like it would be so remiss of me if I did not give people an opportunity to be able to experience that. Maybe you're here for the first time. Maybe you've been coming for a long time, but you don't know Jesus. You don't have a relationship with God. This church, this city on a hill, isn't just a city, it's a family. God wants us to be a part of His family and connected to Him, to be brothers and sisters in Him. And today, I just want to give an opportunity. If you're here and you don't know Jesus, you're here and you, you wouldn't call yourself a Christian, I just want to give you a chance to be able to step into that space of knowing God. He wants you to know Him intimately. You can know God. And so if you're here and you don't know Him, then I'm just simply going to pray and uh, pray for you. I'm not going to embarrass you or call you out, but I'm going to pray for you that God would reveal Himself to you. But if that's you, then I, I would just love to know who it is that I'm praying for. Again, I'm not going to embarrass you or pull you out. But if you don't know Jesus and you want to, then very quickly just raise your hand. I'll see it and you can put it straight back down again and then I'm going to pray. So anyone here this morning, very quickly just raise your hand. Give us, oh, right at the back there. Thank you so much. Is there anyone else? It's a little bit difficult to see. Is there anyone else this morning? You don't know Jesus, but you want to. He loves you. That's why He died, that you might be able to be part of family. It's what we celebrate at Easter, His death and resurrection that makes you and I part of family, brothers and sisters together. So before I pray, just one last time, would anyone join this, uh, join this one other person? Just quickly raise your hand, I'll see it. And you can put it straight back down. Is there anyone else before I start to pray? Great, then let me pray. Father, we are so grateful to you that you wanna be our heavenly father, that you, you wanna bring us into that place of family, that even though we don't deserve it, even though we've done wrong, even though we've, uh, we've ignored you, we've lived our own way, yet you sent Jesus to die for us and in doing so, take on all of our wrongdoing, all of our sin, everything that creates a barrier between us and you. And by doing so, you took that barrier away and gave us access to be your son, your daughter. Today, Father, for that one who raised her hand, I pray that you would bring your revelation, that by your Holy Spirit, you would speak to her heart right now, that she would sense you drawing her into your presence. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would come and reveal yourself as the lover of her soul and the lifter of her head. Father, for those maybe here who, who felt that in their heart, but they didn't raise their hand, God, I pray that you would speak to them also and reveal yourself to them also. Because I know your heart is towards them and that you don't, wanna, you don't want anybody on the outer, but you wanna draw everybody into that place of closeness to you and being part of the family of God. So Father, I pray today that you would bring your revelation and your life into people's hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Fantastic. Why don't we stand to our feet? I'm gonna pray for you before we go. Uh, if you raised your hand, or maybe if you didn't, but you wanted to raise your hand, can I encourage you today just to maybe make your way out to the Next Steps table? 
we want to give you a Bible. We'd love to help you in your journey in, in getting to know God and coming into a place of, of community and family and relationship. So if you just want to make your way, there's a table in the foyer. It's got a big banner behind it. it says Next Steps. We'd love to meet with you, uh, pray with you, and give you a Bible and help you along in any way we can. Let me pray for you today. Father, we're so grateful that we can be part of this city on a hill. We can be part of this church family. Your Word says you place the lonely in families. You place us in a, in a space where we can connect with one another as well as with you. And Father, as we go from here, I pray that your blessing would fall upon each and every person, that you would so touch each and every person, your presence would so rest on each and every one here, that as we go into our sphere of influence, when we go into our world, our workplace, our school, our university, our home, the marketplace, wherever it is, that as we go into that place, we carry your presence in such a way that people would sense it, they'd know there's something different. And in doing so, they would be drawn to you. Let our good works, let our light so shine that you would be glorified by it. That's our prayer. Holy Spirit, rest upon each and every one of us as we go from this place and let your presence permeate us and therefore permeate everybody we come into contact with. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Fantastic. Thank you so much for being in church this morning. Don't forget tonight, 5.30, we've got Pastor Sam coming to preach. It's gonna be phenomenal. It's gonna be a great night. We'll see you 5.30 at Revival Night. Have a great day, church.